How many of you said that you were gonna get fit and start something different in January and you still haven't done it? How many of you said that for the past six years and you still haven't done it? How many of you have been bitching about 20 pounds or 10 pounds or 15 pounds for the past however many years? How many of you are tired of relying on Spanx? How many of you feel great in your clothes but you hate how you look naked and you just rely on candlelight when it's bedtime? You know what I'm saying? Um, Shira says she always, oh, I'm so glad that you use a notebook. And Elle says she uses a notebook and colored markers. I'm all about colored markers. Um, Shira says she always wants sweets after a meal. So do I. Um, so I'm gonna give you the last example and then I'm gonna wrap it up with what I found works for me. And this was just me kind of taking what's most important. And I, what I really wanna share with you when I explain to you, here's what I do and here's what's really working. When you see what I'm not obsessing about anymore and then I, again, I'm 51, or excuse me, I'm turning 51 in uh, six weeks, right? Uh, April 2nd. Um, I'm 50, I am already in menopause, I'm hormonally imbalanced, I have hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, I have every issue known to man. I run three businesses, I've been dealing with chronic pain, chronic headaches for the past seven months. I have all of these issues and yet I have been able to simplify, get rid of that 80% of crap I don't need to obsess about anymore, simplify, find my own little happy spot within caloric deficit, track, and I'm losing weight. And I can tell you, this is why I'm being very public because I also believe being very public is a great thing for accountability that can push all of us further. I'm being very public and telling you guys, you watch me. I'm 20 pounds over my goal weight. I will reach my weight, I think, in the next two months. It might, it might overlap and, and, and take me a little bit longer, but I believe you will see me by applying everything I'm teaching here in the next two months. And I will have before and after photos. You've never seen me do that. In all of the times I've been blogging and being, you know, running a fitness company, I've never done that because I've always thought I was trying, 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 and training and doing all this stuff. I was doing a lot of that stuff, but I was doing a lot of these examples. So the second example I'm gonna share with you, I believe many of you have done something similar as well, and then we're gonna wrap it up. There was one time, um, and I mentioned this on a podcast too, but I specifically remember this because it was such a huge moment of, oh my God, this is what, like I had this, this moment when this happened of this is the type of decision making that I've been applying for months and months and probably years that has kept me exactly where I'm at. So I remember that my man, he's an attorney, he was um, in a trial. And when he's in a trial, he has to leave uh, the house really early in the morning and he doesn't get home until late because they, they all go back to the office after, I don't know why I'm telling you all this, um, and then he comes home really late. And sometimes, even though he and the crew, they've all gone back to the office to like do a download after the trial that day, they don't eat, it drives me crazy. So he comes home and I'm like, have you had dinner? You know, and sometimes he's getting home at eight o'clock at night, sometimes even later. So this day in particular that I remember, and I was cooking right back there on that stove and that counter, okay? This is where the spot happened. I feel like I should have like a yellow rope around it because this was like the moment of clarity right here. So during that day, I know that I had hit my caloric window. I was like maybe at 1500 calories, okay? I'd had my uh, lunch, I'd had my afternoon snack, I'd had my dinner, I'd eaten within my window. And here's the other, part that we really need to make sure we pay attention to, okay? Because I've also covered this with everybody. I had had everything I needed to eat that day and I was hungry. The reason I say I'm hungry is this is a huge point. And for those of you who are here watching or you're watching on the replay, you know that we talk about this all the time and you're probably like giving me the finger right now. But a lot of people, this is a lot, of also some of the BS that's um, floated out there in the fitness space, you will be hungry on a diet. Okay, I'm leaving a pause there for a reason. It's not the end of the world for you to have, I have it right now. My stomach is churning just a little bit where I'm like, I'd really like to have something. I'd like to have a Pop-Tart. I'd like to have 12 Pop-Tarts. Um, you know what I'm saying? When your stomach has that like, you're going to have hunger pangs 
it is natural to have hunger pangs, especially when you go from a period in your life where you've been eating too much and you have to cut it back. And that's typically where a lot of us, even us diehard fitness fanatics who think we've been at it for a long time, there's going to be that point where you've been eating a lot of us, my caloric deficit is 1600. I was probably eating 2000 to 2500 calories a day of healthy food. So when you go from eating that much food and you cut out potentially 1000 calories a day, 500 calories a day, your body's like WTF. Uh, I like some more food. And then you add to that that we live in a country of convenience. Starbucks, drive throughs and the drive throughs with the not just one size, but the killer size. You go into gas station and you can get a big gulp bigger than my head, including my hair. Okay, we live where food is accessible and in abundance and without spending a lot of money. It is very much a challenge. It is a mind F okay to be hungry in your tummy and to have food so easily accessible but that's where the success of you hitting your weight loss is going to come here that's why accountability and community is key if you go it alone having to deal with that mind having to convince yourself don't do it don't do it you want to lose weight don't eat those extra peppermint patties that are sitting in the freezer right now i know they taste good but each one of those is 50 calories and you could easily eat six of those don't do it like it's easier if you have someone to turn to, okay? But please understand, too many people think that they can't, they can't do it because they can't deal with the hunger pangs. I challenge you to get over that thinking. And frankly, it's a shame for anybody of us, any of us, excuse me, that live in this country to say, oh, I could never do that, when truly, I'm not trying to make you feel like a piece of shit, but when there really are people starving all over the world, that we're like, oh my God, there's no way I could go. I could never do a 24 hour fast. Yes, you could. And you know what? If you really tried harder, you could do a three day fast. Don't think you can't. Stop making excuses for yourself because you just don't want to try harder. So you will be hungry. You're going to have to have, <laughs> you're gonna have to learn, all of us, to be able to sit down at night and watch TV with our, with our partner and, and sit down and have whatever it is, a hot tea or, or maybe um, a Turkish coffee. Actually, it's probably not a good idea. I just tried Turkish coffee last weekend, it was amazing, but later that night we were like, so um, it's intense stuff. Anyway, there has to be ways that you figure out how to not eat and kind of distract your mind from the hunger pangs. The hunger pangs don't mean you're dying. The hunger pangs don't mean that, oh, I worked out hard, that must be, I mean, I used to kid myself with that. Oh, I, you know, I must be, I'm working out more, so I must need to eat, my, I, I, must, eat myself. I must need to eat more to, to fuel myself. No, you don't, you're kidding yourself. It's okay to have hunger pangs. Now, if you're ever lightheaded or about to pass out or whatever, eat something, eat a cracker, but you don't need to eat a Big Mac. Like, come on, let's, let's be reasonable. Okay, so back to my last story. Um, I'd eaten everything that day. I was at like 1500 calories out of my 1600 calorie caloric deficit. And Steve comes home and it's like eight o'clock at night. And of course he hadn't eaten. So I'm like, let me make you something. And we had made these um, big salad bowls before that were really yummy. They had um, grilled chicken, organic grilled chicken, um, organic black beans, um, cilantro on the top, chopped onions, um, sauteed peppers, um, sweet potatoes that we cooked in the air fryer and um, some quinoa I think on the bottom and then we put avocado as well just like a big bowl mix it all up it's really good and so I had some of the leftover stuff and I was going to make him I said you want me to make you one of those bowls oh and grilled zucchini was one of the things too he's like yeah so here it is like 7 30 8 o'clock at night now again I'm done I shouldn't be eating anything else and I'm cooking this stuff for him how many of you can relate to this because you have kids you're either cooking for your kids, you're cooking for your family, you've hit your window, you know you shouldn't be eating, but you're cooking for somebody else. How many of you, you're dealing with this? This is where it's temptation. I'm not gonna say it's not temptation, but the more that we're aware, like, okay, I'm gonna go balls to the wall, I'm gonna kick ass, 
for eight weeks. I'm gonna do this and it's gonna be hard. It's not gonna be easy. I'm gonna have hunger pangs. I'm gonna have to say no when I wanna say yes, but I'm gonna do it for eight weeks so I don't have to do it for eight years, okay? That's what you do. You say, I'm gonna do it for two months so I don't have to do it for two years. I do it for you know three months or three, not three weeks, three months so I don't have to complain about this for three years, okay? It's not gonna be easy, but you can do it, okay? It's simple. So I'm cooking and I'm making all this stuff for him. And I realized as I was standing right back there and I was grilling on this inside grill we have, I was grilling zucchini and I was taking a couple and I was just eating. Now some of you right now, I'm pointing to you, some of you right now are watching this going, is she kidding me? Is she going to say that if I have a few bites of zucchini, that's what's keeping me fat? I guarantee you because I was that person. I was that person who's like, you are really going to tell me I can't have zucchini? Not my point. Okay. The point is, I was at my window. <sighs> I, I, hold on. Um, hold on. I, I'm sorry, I'm recording a lot. Can you? Okay, when I have your refrigerator, I better leave it outside and you call the person whenever you're ready. Okay, okay. Sorry. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> We're getting a new refrigerator. Um, so, okay. Focus, Kelly. I gotta close this out. So it's not about having the zucchini. It's not about having that zucchini is bad for you. In fact, on a side note, I did take a food sensitivity test. I'm not allowed to have zucchini right now. My point is, how many of you have had a day like that where maybe you know that you're at your caloric window, or maybe you don't know, but maybe you you're like kind of aware i've had lunch i've had dinner my spouse or significant others coming home or my girlfriend stopping by to to talk about you know her breakup and i'm gonna sit here and eat with her and you say to yourself okay how many of you have had this conversation you go well i know i've eaten but it's protein it's vegetables our bodies can always use extra protein. See, this is where we take what we've learned in fitness and we apply it and it's, it's too much because we're applying it in an inappropriate manner. And it doesn't mean that, that that's shame on us. It's shame on the industry because we've been given so many mixed messages. But how many of you have done that? So I, in my head, had this awareness while I was making this stuff for Steve, like, you know what? Old Kelly that was not tracking her stuff or maybe old Kelly that did know she was at 1600 calories. Yeah, I talk about myself in third person. Old Kelly would have continued to make that dish. I would have said, you know what? This is organic black beans. This is rice. This is, you know, um, the zucchini. This is sweet potato. This is all the stuff that's good for me. How many of you have said that, right? Because that's what we've been trained to say. This is good for you. This is healthy food. How could it be bad for you? It's too much calories. I was probably eating an extra 600 calories. That, my friend, is how you stay in maintenance mode. That's why I've been at a plateau for so long and I've been bitching like, I'm trying everything, I'm at a plateau. Guess what? You're eating at plateau maintenance calories and you're, you're not doing it on purpose. You're not doing it with Oreos. You're not doing it with Krispy Kreme donuts. But those are the types of things that when you're not saying to yourself, I'm going to diet. I'm going to lose this. I'm going to get rid of all those people that say, just watch what you eat. Just, you know, how many people have seen that where they like, you know, a portion of protein is this much. A portion of vegetables is this much in the palm of your hand. And then I'm like, is it this part of my hand or is it this part of my hand? Don't do that to yourself. If you, if you want peanut butter, weigh it out and, and, and get yourself a little, you want to see how many scales I have you guys? This is so simple. But this can be such a game changer. These Eat Smart scales um, are like 25 and 40 bucks on Amazon. Best thing ever, because when you turn them on, you can measure in ounces, pounds, and grams. They are wonderful. But like, if you want to have something to eat, if you want to have peanut butter, if you want to have avocado, like measure it out. That's a whole, that could be a whole other podcast. So I'm curious how many of you, um, I already said, Shira, yeah, everybody, everybody talks about wanting to have sweets at night. But the bottom line is, whether it's sweets or whether it's zucchini, overeating is overeating. And too many of us, we're focusing on all the wrong things. And we're not focusing on what needs to be really focused on in a much, much more diligent, much more precise, much more tracked way. All of this stuff, 
worrying about cutting out carbs, not eating bread, cutting out alcohol, avoiding starchy carbs, worrying about like, oh, which vegetable, which kind of potato is good for me or bad for me? Are grains bad or grains good? You know what you need to do? You need to be in a caloric deficit. You need to be in a diet and you need to diet right and very seriously for a short amount of time so that you get the, so you guys, <laughs> I saw your L, I'm sorry. I saw your comment come up like it was near my eyes and I was about to say, so you get the notebook that you want. So you get the results that you want. In closing, first of all, I really hope I went into extreme detail because I'm so, and I have to shut this door, it's bothering me. I'm so passionate about this, you guys, because when you have that aha moment and realize you've wasted so much time unintentionally, most of us have wasted time unintentionally. But when we realize that all of this stuff, all this stuff that I've been told by trainers for years has just confused me and made me obsess and worry, it's all of that stress and obsessing is so much more damaging to our health and our psyche and our emotional state long-term than any one piece of pizza. And we are, what happens is because we don't take dieting seriously enough, we expand the amount of time that we're dieting, but we're not really dieting. So because we're, we're never really making progress, it goes on and on and on. And then because it's been so long, how many of you have, have been to a restaurant and you, you maybe have had this moment where you look at the menu and go, I don't remember what it's like to just choose what I want to eat. Like how many of you are like that? How many of you are so used to saying, I can't have that, I can't have that, I can't have that. That used to be me for years. I mean, there was one good thing that came out of me working with this dietitian a couple years ago is she really wanted me to get a better relationship with food. So I will really give her credit for that. She was like, go out to eat and pick what you want to eat at, a, you know, at any restaurant. And I remember I went out to eat with my man and I'm like, I, I don't know how to look at a menu. I don't know how to look at a menu. How many of you can relate to that? How many of you look at a menu when you go out to eat and you're like, I can't have that, that has fried food, that has carbs, that has bread, that has croutons, that has fat in it, that has too much of this. Oh, look at the calories, I can't have that, I can't have that. You know what? The beautiful thing about understanding that to lose weight, it's caloric deficit above anything else. You know what the beautiful thing about that is? If you want to go to Red Robin and have a cheeseburger and fries this week, you can go, but you plan for it. And it's, it's so much easier than you think. Um, the, the way that I've taken this most important concept, and I've actually, I will say this, so I, I wanna make sure that I explain it here. I'm gonna do a whole blog post on the specific parts of what I'm doing, and I'm happy to do a call with any of you guys and, and just give you my advice. Just remember, I'm not a doctor, a dietitian, or a trainer. I will be giving you my advice and my pointers um, and sharing with you what I'm doing. I'm actually gonna be diving into some you know, challenges to take things up a notch in the coming weeks. You'll see me talking about that, but I'm, I'm really happy to help because I want so many of you who are, who've been stuck like me, feeling like I've been doing this for so long when you really haven't been, and I, I wanna help you understand that, yeah, you need to be really serious for, for a certain amount of time, but it's easier to be really serious for two months or three months or six weeks or whatever, when you know that number one, you're gonna get that gift you've been saying, I just, I would pay anything. I would pay anything if I could do it. I would do any diet if I knew I could get into my bikini. I would do anything if I knew I didn't have this, you know, fat around my stomach. I would do anything if I could get rid of this belly pooch. We've all said it. You just have to work harder for a short amount of time. And then you know that even within this dieting time, you can still, if you plan accurately and you track religiously, you can have pizza. I'm not saying you can have it every night, okay? I don't want to be that person who's like, you know, some of those gadgets you see advertised on TV and they're like, you can do nothing all day and drink beer and sit in your recliner and still lose weight and get ripped abs. No, I'm not saying that. What I can tell you is I've planned my caloric deficit. Now I also use intermittent fasting because it works for me. You don't have to. 
I incorporate intermittent fasting with the caloric deficit because that's what works for me. You don't have to do intermittent fasting at all. I also do one cleanse day. So I do a 24 hour fast. For those of you that think you can't do it, you're full of shit. Yes, you can. It's so much easier than anything. And most of you have done a 24 hour fast without even realizing it. Um, so I do a 24 hour fast one time a week, but I also cycle my calories a little bit. I plan ahead. I cycle my calories a little bit so that on Fridays, I do 2,500 calories because Fridays are my day that my man and I go out and typically we actually go out to eat like Friday night and Saturday night, but I allow myself an extra almost thousand calories because I want to be able to have a cocktail. I want to be able to have a margarita and I still track. Okay. Sometimes like Friday during the day, if I know we're going to go to a place where maybe I'm going to have pasta, I know I'm going to probably really use up a lot of those calories. So I'll take it really light during the day. Maybe I'll just do two meal replacement shakes, which equals 500 calories. Then I've got 2000 calories to use at dinner. Some of you might be going how 2000 calories, how can you use that at dinner? You can go to Panera and use up 2,000 calories, okay? You guys need to start really paying attention to um, caloric load and nutritional information in restaurants. You get more and more of them are providing that. Um, so just know that when I tell you, we've got to bring diet back. We've got to start making diet sexy again because it's our best friend. Dieting is simply caloric deficit. And to me, when you realize that you can let go of all of these crazy rules, right? And only focus on something that's simple. I mean, wouldn't you like to know, like, instead of worrying about, I can't have bread ever, I can't have carbs ever, I can't have this, I can't have that, I can't have alcohol, I've gotta be balls to the wall, I can't have any of this. If you focused on one thing, okay, and you focused on that religiously and you tracked it. So you committed to yourself and you said, I am going to do this for 30 days. I'm going to track my calories and stick to this 1600 calorie deficit. Map out what, whatever it is. And I'll help you figure out what your 1600 calorie, your caloric deficit is for your goal weight. Commit to yourself. I want to do this for 30 days and see if Kelly's right. Prove me wrong. Cause I guarantee you, if you, when I applied this caloric deficit thing, you guys, in December, my man made a, a comment to me about five days in. He's like, oh my God, you're losing weight. I can see it. And you guys, I've had a rough couple of years. I've followed some really bad advice. Um, I mentioned a dietitian earlier. Um, she had me cutting out almost all of my working out and eating a lot more and I just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it wasn't until the end of last year, it was such a great feeling because the year before that, I was horrified by my body. Nothing in my closet fit me, nothing, nothing. I'm not exaggerating, absolutely nothing. And then fast forward to December, just a couple months ago, I was able to feel really, really good in my clothes, be able to go in my closet and go, I'm so excited to pick out my outfits. Ladies, how many of you have gone into your closet and said, oh my God, nothing fits me? Or you look at things and go, well, I could wear that, but I have to wear a blazer because of my stomach. Um, or if it's, you know, like you feel good in clothes, but you don't feel good naked or you don't feel good at the beach or you don't feel good in, in shorts. Isn't it time to be able to feel good all the time? That's, that's what I wanted. And I can tell you, it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter if you have kids, you don't need to be working out two hours a day. You don't need to be on anything extreme. You don't need to cut out food, food groups, excuse me. You don't need to cut out alcohol. It's like getting back to the basics, but being really, really strict and disciplined and accountable that's what's going to help you win. So in closing, I'm sure I went at least an hour, probably more. Anyway, I want to reference a couple of things and I will link this up below for those of you that are watching this in the replay. Um, number one, just to summarize what we talked about today, we really have to understand dieting is not a dirty word. Dieting is something we all need to get more comfortable with. Two, if you have been dieting or trying to lose weight for a year, six months, two years, whatever, you're not doing it right. You're not doing it hard enough. I was one of those people, so I'm not shaming you. But the great part about that is if you've been dieting, watching what you eat, working out, trying all of this stuff for all this time, 
The good thing is it's probably, you will probably be more surprised by your results if you really kick ass and start counting your calories and I'll help you. I'm happy to help you. I'm so passionate about this because it was like I was given new life. I will help you figure out what your caloric deficit is, how to calorie cycle if you want, how to incorporate into intermittent fasting if you want, um, how to make the best recommendations for you where you're, where you're at, and then join one of my Facebook groups. I've got several free Facebook groups where you can join and be accountable because I also think that that is key. When you're ready to jump off the wagon, you know, to be able to go into a Facebook group or text a friend or PM me and say, I'm, I'm about to binge, I'm having a really bad day, talk me out of it, you know? That, those, those are the things that are gonna keep you on track. So, number one, bring dieting back. Number two, if you've been trying forever and you've been stuck, you will probably see better results if you really commit to doing something harder and stricter for a short amount of time so you don't have to keep doing it for a longer amount of time. You can do this. Um, number three, we need to get rid of all of those crazy diet myths and fitness myths like carbs are bad, fruit is bad, vegetables are bad. That's all BS. It's BS. So is, you know, just eat clean and you, you don't have to worry about counting calories. You have to count calories. Okay. You have to count calories. If you really want to, you know, get past your plateau, you need to get comfortable counting calories, period. Um, so I have a couple of podcasts that are relevant to what we're talking about today. Um, I definitely encourage you to go to The Kelly O Show and listen to my recent interview with Bonnie Feaster. We talk a lot about this. She's gonna be back on the show. I also have some new shows going live in the next two weeks on these very topics. Wednesday night, I want you guys to come back here at 6 p.m. Central. I will have Delray Messer and another trainer here, and we're gonna be talking about that whole nighttime snacking thing, and we're gonna be doing kind of a fun bedtime belly buster challenge if you wanna learn what that's all about and why it's important and how it can help fast, blast, blast belly fat. Come here six o'clock um, to watch a live on Wednesday night. So watch the podcast interview with me and Bonnie Feaster. Watch the podcast interview with me and Jordan Syatt. The most recent podcast that I released the end of last week, it's a three-part interview with Brett Contreras, the glute guy. Most of that is about glute training, but what I love is that he brings in some very um, complimentary truths to what we've been talking about here, which is like, look, this doesn't have to be complicated. You can lose weight by paying attention to your food and walking. Okay, people are over complicating it, paying attention, obsessing about the stuff that doesn't matter and not obsessing about stuff that does matter. So those are some podcasts I really want you to listen to. And then furthermore, go find Jordan Syatt online and listen to everything he puts out. He is the person that woke me up and made me pay attention to caloric deficit. So I have to give him all the credit in the world. And there's two podcast episodes on his um, podcast, one where he, well, actually two of them where he interviews people that have hypothyroidism. Um, but listen to the one from September 1st. It's a great interview. That's the interview that snapped me out of my, oh, I can't lose weight because I have hypothyroidism mode. It will change your life. He will change your life. And the more you tune into his stuff, you're going to get why suddenly I realized I don't have to listen to that crap anymore. I can simplify and get results I've never had. Um, so I told you about the podcast and just in general, I am back to blogging again. And a lot of you write to me and ask for me to share what I'm doing differently. You ask me about bioidentical hormonal replacement, how I'm dealing with hormones, how I'm dealing with hypothyroidism. I'm going to be doing content on all of that at kellyalexa.com. So if you want more information on any of this stuff and other stuff that you follow me for, head over there now, subscribe at kellyalexa.com. Again, lastly, um, tune in on Wednesday, six o'clock central here. We're doing a Facebook Live about this whole bedtime belly buster challenge we're doing. You'll learn why it can really help you um, not only improve your sleep, but improve your fat loss and address belly fat um, by starting to incorporate protein before bed. I've had trainers tell me that for years, but this is kind of incorporated into um, a, a more focused program and I'm going to be doing that for two weeks and then um, I'm going to be hosting a 30-day um, Facebook, it's going to be a private Facebook group but it's free to, free to join for any of you, um, a 30-day weight loss challenge for spring break. Um, 
spring break in quotations because most of us are too old to be going on spring break, but you know, get in shape for spring. If you have any questions for me, stuff that you saw here, if you're live, if you saw stuff or listen to stuff here that you want to ask me about in general, my email is kelly at kellyalexa.com. I would love to hear from you. Um, I really hope this was helpful. There's a reason why I took all of this time. I'm very obviously passionate about it. As somebody who has wasted a lot of time winging it and just thinking, oh, I've got it all up here. I'm so grateful to know what's important and I've tested it. And you guys are gonna watch me apply this over the next 60 days and see me just shred like a mother. And I'm not even a mom, but it doesn't matter. So you guys have a great rest of the day. It was so good to see some familiar faces here today. I will be back, gonna start Facebook Living every Monday here at 10 a.m. So I will see you next week, but then also make sure you tune in, um, like I said, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Have a great rest of the day, you guys. Bye.